Welcome back. In my last video, I did a review of this Uline 5-in-1 charging kit, and I mentioned it was a free gift with the purchase over $300, uh, and it normally sold for $18. Well, I said in that video I was going to do a teardown of this in a separate video, and of course this is that video. So without further ado, let's get into this. Uh, now I already did a little poking around to see if this was going to come apart easily, and of of course it's probably not so this may be destructive and I mentioned that earlier so uh, if we don't recover this um, no harm no foul it was a free item anyway I don't really care and uh, I just want to see what's inside these guys anyway because they do seem pretty interesting now we'll uh, do just a brief brief review on this but I mentioned this was the regular uh, AC input uh, here by the way this is a uh, Anywhere from 100 to 240 volt, uh, 50 to 60 hertz, so this will work worldwide. Obviously, you'll need the correct adapter, but it puts out 5 volt, 2100 milliamps. And I think that's combined for the two, so obviously if I'm going to plug my tablet in here, something that's a higher drain, then I'll have to use, obviously, just the one thing. Whereas this guy here has a 2.1 and a 1.0, and I would hope that they would work co-equally, but... We will see once we get inside of the how they're uh, wired up. And the battery here, this is a 2200 milliamp hour with a uh, 5 volt 800 milliamp input and a 5 volt 1 amp output. Pretty slim, so, full size USB port. Oh, and uh, I should get my charge doctor real quick before we do take this apart. Uh, I mentioned in the other video in the review that this wasn't fully charged. I, I went ahead and did fully charge it. So we'll uh, get a look at what this has. Uh, when it is fully charged. All right, so the battery pack fully charged 4.5 to 4.8 it it fluctuates and um, it seems like it was actually higher Perhaps when it wasn't charged Which, which doesn't make much sense, but um, it wasn't putting out Close to 5 volts before it was putting out well, a little closer than it is now, but it's uh I guess it's it's getting there when I tried this last night for just a few seconds, it seemed like it was hovering around 4.5, 4.6 with the full charge, which was weird. Um, this we plugged in, and uh, unfortunately when I plug it in up here, I won't be able to read it on camera, but it's uh, just about 4.7, so that's a little under. Actually, we can do this. I'm trying to read it upside down. It's kind of hard. 4.83. The other one here I can actually test. I didn't think I could because I didn't have my um, actual uh, power supply here with my 12 volt plug in for this, but that's fine. I could just take uh, some alligator leads here and plug them into my power supply real quick over here as I kill some of my desk lights. But this one here, we should be able to see, hopefully, Oh, 5.13, 5.12. Now, of course, this is open circuit. I'm sure it'll go down once it's actually starting to charge. But that's good to know. All right, so now let's get to the fun bits of this. We're going to tear this apart. Um, this guy looks like I can just uh, press it, and it should pop apart, but it might be glued together or welded, you know, like a plaster weld. So I'll have to dig around there a little bit. This one I think I should be able to separate. This one over here I'm not sure either because we could see the outer shell is all one piece. So I'm going to do a little break here and we'll come back when I have this open. Had to go out to the van to get some more Vance tools. Well, if you're wondering why everything looks different, I had to actually reshoot this particular portion because during editing I noticed there wasn't any audio in it and it was just easier just to reshoot it. So we'll go back to the regular recording after this little segment, but I wanted to talk about the DC adapter here real quick. Now this opened up pretty easily, um, actually easier than the last device I opened, and uh, which is good, but it'll go together a little bit easier too. But looking in here, it's nothing really special. We can see there's an inductor, there's a standard IC chip, a diode, a resistor, or a couple of resistors, or capacitors, and fundamentally that's it. Um, just what looks like a smoothing capacitor on the output over here. But uh, I can't really see any kind of fuse. There wasn't one at the end up here like you normally would see. 
and I did notice that these jacks kind of weeble wobble a little bit. They should be a little bit more secure to the board at least. Um, they may clip into the plastic a little better, but this part definitely isn't very sturdy. But it does seem like what they did here was is they ran all the connections on here, the, the data connections to this side of the board where they do have a couple different resistors. And those resistors are set up between data plus, data minus to be able to set the um, current capabilities, I guess you could say, of the device that's plugged in it. And Apple does that a lot. Um, I'm sure there's Android devices out there that do that too. And that basically uh, tells the device how much current it can draw out of this particular charger once it's plugged in. Um, but it doesn't seem like these two are actually separated from each other. It is all off the same power supply, obviously. But it's a pretty minimalistic design. Looks, looks pretty good from what I could tell, other than this slight design issue here where it's a little weak. I'm, so, I'm sure repeated pluggings um, in and out or would, would probably weaken your connections back here since this does wobble like that. But not, not too bad. I can probably salvage this and use it for another purpose, of course. But that's really all I wanted to point out about this. So now back to the rest of the video. Well, that did not go as easy as I would have liked to have. Um, unfortunately, my best efforts with the spudger tools were unmatched and I needed to use more convincing methods to get this thing open. So now, of course, you know, it won't go back together, but that's fine. I'm not too concerned with that. I have a bunch of these devices anyway, so it's not a huge deal. But we could take a look at, you know, there's a pretty nice mechanism here. The uh, snappiness is pretty decisive, so it's nice it stays in. You see there's a whole little mechanism for that to work, but the leads coming off uh, are a fairly decent quality. They're uh, a little bit larger than some of the ones I've seen in some of the cheap supplies, so that's always a good thing. Uh, not sure if the camera will pick it up though, I did find a flat spot on the cable over here so that got pushed up against something when it was assembled not a huge deal but that could be a place where insulation possibly would have wore off on it so that's interesting to note looking at the underside of the board here you see it's pretty well laid out there are some isolation slots here and um, you know pretty good separation between the the two sides here uh, there's even some some slotting in over here so it's it's pretty good not bad there Hopefully you can see the arrangement here and here. This is the uh, data plus, data minus connections here, and you can see the resistors in between those. And uh, not, not bad. Now it's interesting how they have uh, an aluminum capacitor, and then you also have the traditional electrolytics over here. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I won't I won't take the uh, bobbin apart in here and the windings and stuff. I know Big Clive likes to do that and see how the separation is on the actual windings inside, but I do want to kind of retain this as a working supply. I may be able to repurpose this as something else, so I, I'll refrain from doing that. But for now, we can just take a look at it, see what the ratings are in here. Now, of course, uh, these guys here, this was plugged in, but it did discharge. There should be some kind of... Uh, resistor across this to discharge this when you unplug it to keep yourself from getting tingled if you unplug it and that seems like that's the case although when i plugged this in we were able to plug the charge doctor in and unplug everything and the charge doctor uh was still lit up which is pretty interesting for just a second because of course there is some residual charge in these but yeah it doesn't look too bad it's got the uh, obligatory Celastic in here just to kind of keep everything together. Just a big spooge job of that. But other than that, it looks pretty good. So I'll clean this mess off and uh, we'll take a look at the battery, which of course I want to try to not damage um, for obviously the safety reasons of it, but I wouldn't mind being able to reuse this. So we'll see if we can get that guy apart. Okay, I got into there. It wasn't, again, it wasn't easy. This time I used a uh, a razor knife honestly and I just went around the edge just gently so I didn't go too far in in fact I just put this out like a click like that and uh, I was able to get right into that edge pretty neatly and uh, yeah it's your typical uh, 3.7 volt battery it's your normal arrangement lithium-ion uh, 2200 milliamp hour right on the battery so I don't think it's a false claim on the outside of the package like you sometimes get um, and by the way if I didn't mention it all these plastic bits here 
they're all like ultrasonically welded um, or glued for some of, of some sort. Usually they uh, would press these pieces together and sometimes they snap, but in this case they uh, they didn't snap together. Like I said, they were they were welded together or, or glued or I can't really tell, but that definitely made getting them apart pretty difficult. But of course there is really no reason to get these things apart. They have no, not, uh, they're non-user serviceable parts inside. Uh, Obviously, they don't even really say that anymore in a lot of these things because you can't get them open anyhow. But yeah, that's really all there is to this thing. It's just a it's just a battery, nothing special, obviously. But we can look at this charging circuit on here, which is pretty cool. And of course, it's got its own inductor on here. Now this is going to be a boost circuit because this has got to take that 3.7 volts and it's got to boost it up to 5 volts for the USB connector on here to work. Um, let's see if I can uh, possibly connect this still. Let's see that blue light going on there. 4.97 volts. And... Uh, this is basically just, you know, obviously it's just soldered onto the board there, but we could actually um, reuse this as a another circuit, basically. I mean, we could just unsolder this and, and possibly hook up another battery to it and use this as a charging circuit, really. So that's kind of cool if we did want to repurpose this, but after all, it is a good working battery pack. Now, again, no reason to take this battery pack apart. If you do want to see that, I'm sure you can find one on YouTube here. There's probably plenty of people who've taken them apart, so you can go check out one of those videos, but that's not something I really need to do or feel comfortable in doing, but I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> but anyway, we can get a good close-up look at this. So it's kind of fun when you uh, do things like get the, uh, get the wire over here and uh, do the Paradox trick like I did the other day and plug in the output to the input. In fact, I'll just, I'll just do it directly. You can tell everyone, look everyone, I got perpetual, uh, perpetual uh, electric over here. All you gotta do is just plug these in like this and uh, we can see both lights are lit. If the camera will focus, obviously the red one's gonna be more predominant, but the blue light is also glowing right below it. And uh, so it's definitely draining and drawing at the same time from itself, which of course doesn't really work. There's going to be some loss. So you're, you, you will kill the battery eventually this way if you leave it plugged in long enough in case you were wondering. But uh, it's just a fun thing to, just to do because it, it just blows my mind that you can possibly do that. Now, of course, this connector is going to be a lot harder to unplug, but... Now, um, since this isn't a, f a regular, I'll call it a regular USB connection, um, you do have to be careful when you're plugging things in like that because you don't want to uh, put too much strain on that board. But I, I can salvage this after all. Um, I, I'm just going to clean the uh, rough edges on this case up and then I'm going to go ahead and just glue it, you know, put it back together because I want to keep this as a functioning unit. Um, and. Uh, that's fundamentally it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And uh, as always, you can check out my other videos. I've been doing this end card thing in the end of these videos. So of course you can um, see some videos. I'll have uh, maybe one of them or two of them up here. And then I'll have my uh, a way to subscribe with a, a button here somewhere. And uh, as always guys, thanks for watching and we'll uh, see you next video.